The media love to lie, and a lie that is now being championed by the leftist media that is gaining popularity is the claim that right-wing extremists are actually more dangerous than Muslim terrorists. So what's all this fuss about potential terrorists coming into America? Right-wingers are the real threat. You know what we did when it comes to right-wing terrorism? Which since 9-11 has been a bigger problem in this country, more number of attacks, more people killed. This comes as a new report finds white supremacists and other non-Muslim fanatics have killed nearly twice as many people as Muslim extremists since 9-11. According to the report by the research center New America, 26 people have been killed in jihadist violence in the U.S. since 9-11, but 48 people have been killed in attacks by right-wing groups. Um, first, I think we need to take a step back and, and understand uh, that there's actually a greater threat of terrorism from white supremacist groups and right-wing extremists and there are from individuals who self-identify as Muslim. So uh, they looked into this by the New America count, uh, according to PolitiFact, in the time since 9-11 the jihadists have killed 26 Americans on US soil while those with right-wing leanings have killed 39. They will say that Caucasian men actually commit more terrorist acts than Muslims, or they will say that you are seven times more likely to be killed by a right-winger than by ISIS, and right-wing extremists are a bigger threat to America than ISIS itself. They will cite a 2014 Duke study which says that Muslim-linked terrorism has claimed 37 Americans. In 2015, the New York Times cites a study that says there are only six terrorism-related plots per year that have only caused 50 fatalities in America since 9-11. Or in 2017, Vox Media uses another study which is being done by the same professor as the 2014 Duke study, which says that there are 46 Muslim Americans linked to violent extremism in 2016, causing 54 deaths, and 49 of which came in the Orlando nightclub shooting. But is it true? No, it isn't true. And there are several ways the political left falsified this claim. The first is just outright not including many instances. For example, the Washington DC Beltway sniper and his accomplice who murdered 10 people and was given the death penalty for terrorism isn't on the list. A Denver man who shot four co-workers and one SWAT team member in the name of Allah in 2006, also missing. A Birmingham Saudi Arabian student who killed a non-Muslim because of Muslim persecution around the world. Two separate instances of people being killed by Muslims in Houston, Texas in 2012. An Ohio Muslim convert who killed his father out of the will of Allah in 2013. A 2014 California Muslim who stabbed an Ace Hardware employee 17 times until he died, claiming that he did it in a mission for Allah. You won't find those murders on the New America study they continuously repeat, but why are such instances not included? Well, another way the left corrupt the data in these studies is the method by which they define a right-wing extremist versus an Islamic extremist. The way a right-wing extremist is determined is very broad and imprecise, and due to its vague definitions, it includes an enormous amount of the American population. For example, Newsweek says the three ideologies within the violent American far-right are racist, anti-federalist, and fundamentalist. Each has subgroups. The racists include white supremacy groups such as the KKK, neo-Nazis, and skinheads, which can differ in subtle ways. The anti-federalists include militias, self-defined patriot groups and what are so-called sovereign citizens, and the fundamentalists are primarily Christian identity groups that believe the biblical war of good versus evil. The Duke study quoted by the New York Times counts right-wing extremists as anyone who claims to stand against government, or they are Americans who thrive on hate and conspiracy theories, or people who think the government is going to seize their guns, or based only if they are just people who seem to be determined by ideological goals or statements that they make, or Vox Media determines right-wing extremists by those adopting extremist views and committing horrendous acts of violence in the name of some righteous cause, be it religion or politics, or just plain old hatred. So to recap, right-wing extremists are anyone who is one of the following. White, Christian, pro-guns, pro-life, a conspiracy theorist, makes ideological statements about their crimes, or claims to be carrying out attacks for a righteous cause, or has expressed any dissatisfaction with government, or has adopted what they decide as extremist views, or is just filled with hate. But this loose and malleable definition of right-wing extremism gives these people the much-needed flexibility and interpretations to manipulate the data. But it gets worse. How do they define an act of Islamic terrorism in their studies? The data set seeks to include all American citizens and residents indicted or convicted for terrorism crimes who were inspired by or associated with Al-Qaeda and its affiliated groups as well as those citizens and residents who were killed before they could be indicted, but have been widely reported to have worked with or been inspired by Al-Qaeda and its affiliated groups. The data set does not include extremists tied to violent Islamist groups that do not target the United States as part of Al-Qaeda's war, for example Hamas and Hezbollah. So the definition of a Muslim terrorist act must be a confirmed affiliate of Al-Qaeda. 
but also the requirements to be an Islamic terrorist does not include homegrown extremists who just so happen to be Muslim or so-called lone wolves. The New America study does not count violent jihadist acts from self-radicalized lone wolf terrorists who swear allegiance to Islam in the same manner as a terrorist attack committed by a card-carrying member of Islamic terrorist organizations. If a terrorist yells Alihu Akbar before going on a murdering spree, that is not enough to count on these studies. Now that is an interesting twist of the data. Notice the rigidness of the definition of Islamic terrorism. You have to actually be affiliated with Al Qaeda in order to count. And while an ideological statement is enough to count someone as a right winger, an ideological statement like Alihu Akbar before murdering people is not enough to count as an act of Islamic extremism. All proclaimed lone wolves and homegrown Muslim terrorist acts do not count. This strict definition allows them to omit incidents like the Tampa airport shooter and Washington mall shooter, among many others. But even though those lone wolves or homegrown extremists don't count in either the number of murders or number of attacks, it becomes more troubling by a politically correct Obama administration doing everything possible to refuse to call a clear act of Muslim violence a terrorist attack. The attacker who was killed by police had in his pocket a two-page manifesto that included details of how he wanted his victims to die including an act of beheading. The document mentions his desire to praise Allah and had a photocopied ISIS flag. The attack was reportedly praised on a Twitter account that is linked to ISIS. Also noteworthy, a week earlier, that very same account called for lone wolf style stabbing attacks. Mm. Martha? So what do the authorities believe was the motivation for this attack? The initial reports from the sheriff, whose department, by the way, is no longer involved in this investigation, said this incident stemmed from what he called personal animosities. The sheriff said, quoting him now, there is nothing to indicate this was anything other than a teenage boy who got upset with fellow classmates. The FBI and campus police have now taken over this investigation, but as of now, they have not addressed the subject of terrorism in the attack. A Muslim attacking cops with a meat cleaver? No deaths. Doesn't count. Students arrested with bomb-making equipment? Lone wolves. Doesn't count. A Muslim shooting up Walmart? Nope. No deaths. Doesn't count. A Muslim convert shooting two police officers? A Muslim plowing into a veteran's car in the name of Allah? No deaths. Doesn't count. An Ohio Muslim murdering his teen daughter in her sleep? Nope. Not terrorism. 29 people injured in a Manhattan bomb planted by Muslims? Only injured. No deaths. Doesn't count. A Muslim stabbing people at a Minnesota mall injuring eight? Nope. No deaths. A Virginia Muslim with an ISIS inspired knife attack? A Tennessee Muslim convert who shoots up three churches? An Ohio Muslim attacking fellow students with a knife? Nope, no deaths. Doesn't count. But while most of the media outlets use death tolls as the metric to determine a conclusion, when it's noticed that these death tolls are misleading and they get backed into a corner, they'll shift their rhetoric from murders to the number of attacks. The FBI data um, indicates that there have been more acts of terrorism committed by right-wing extremists and white supremacists. In addition to that, last year, Duke University... In the last eight years, there have been 100 or more than 100 people killed by white supremacists and more than 350 wounded by white supremacists in America. That's not true. So I'm actually, I'm referring to the number of acts of domestic terrorism okay. um, well, as opposed to victims. So okay, what, look, look so, I mean, obviously yeah. you're making a point that is unsupportable. I'm talking about actual acts of terrorism. People die, people get wounded. I mean, we can define terrorism in many different ways. When Tucker Carlson challenges her that right-wing extremists haven't killed nearly as many as Muslims, she clarifies she's referring to the number of attacks that are defined as terrorism. Counting the number of alleged attacks allows them the broadness and subjectivity of the right-wing extremist definition. And when they use the death statistic, the narrow definition of what a terrorist act is enables them to omit lone wolves or any homegrown Muslim extremists. They will say that right-wing extremists averaged 337 terrorist attacks per year since 9-11, causing 254 deaths. Or different studies that say 65 terrorist acts have been carried out by right-wingers, while only 24 by Muslim extremists since 9-11. But if we use a more definitive qualification of right-wing extremism, as they have for Islamic terrorism acts, the data changes dramatically. Instead of measuring right-wing extremists' alleged attacks, we measure people actually charged with terrorist attacks. But when we do that, just 13 far-right extremists have been indicted on federal terrorism charges since 9-11. However, 580 Muslims, or 45 times more, have been charged with with terrorism. Oh, and there's another problem. Muslims account for 1% of the American population. Whites account for roughly 70%. The numbers shouldn't be anywhere close. So if you're 60 times more likely to be killed by a Muslim, but there are 70 times more white people who qualify as right-wingers, that somehow means that right-wingers are more dangerous. Not because they actually are more dangerous, but because those who can be classified as right-wingers are far more abundant than the 1% of Muslims. But if you were to take the likelihood of being killed by a Muslim terrorist versus a black or Hispanic person, what would the numbers say? Well, the numbers would 
show that you're more likely to be killed by a minority in America than a Muslim terrorist. So what's the big deal? Just let more Muslims from terrorist countries into America. But of course, that is not a metric that they use. But since being shot by a gang member isn't an act of terrorism or extremism, fiddling with the definition of extremists or what constitutes an act of terrorism gives them a lot more room to convey what they want you to believe, which is that conservatives are the real bad guys. There are a number of ways that they could provide a more accurate representation of Muslim violence, like including 9-11 in these studies, which every study doesn't include. Those 3,000 plus deaths would change the data a little bit. If we had American civilians killed abroad, like in Brussels or Paris attacks, that would add to the death toll too. Or if we measured Muslim violence globally as a whole versus right-wing extremism, that would include the over 25,000 terrorist attacks committed by Muslim terrorists abroad. If we include the over 2,000 sexual assaults and rapes of both girls and boys throughout Europe since the Muslim migration, if the point here is to judge the potential threat of more Muslim extremists coming into America, then we should measure the threat globally instead of domestically, because these Muslims are coming from other places around the globe. But the reality is, the people who make the claims that Muslim violence is less threatening than right-wing extremists say these things knowing full well that they're lying, because despite their words, their actions don't support their own statements. Pope Francis said that Muslims were just like Jesus, so we should welcome them in with open arms. But Pope Francis said this while simultaneously increasing his security detail for his midnight mass. Why would he need to increase his security detail? Is it that Pope Francis fears the threat of right-wing extremists? No, it's because he's afraid a Muslim will strap a bomb to themselves and blow up the service. The mayor of New York championed bringing in more Muslim immigrants, but come New Year's Eve in 2006, the city of New York brought in over 60 trucks filled with sand to protect the New Year's Eve parade. Why did he do this? Is it because of the right-wing extremist threat? If it is, how come they haven't always brought in over 60 sand-filled trucks to protect crowds on New Year's Eve when right-wingers have been around for decades? They brought in those trucks to protect people against Muslim jihad attacks, like the truck attacks that have mauled crowds in Europe. If they really believed Muslims weren't a threat, why would they even do this? The United States government under Obama spent between $600 million and $800 million per per year monitoring Americans. Who do you think they were monitoring? Americans haven't always been monitored by Uncle Sam, but now they are, and not because of right-wing extremists, but because we're importing people who might be terrorists in the name of diversity, and in order to protect Americans from terrorist attacks, we spend hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money to monitor the people we're bringing in. But the 60-plus sand-filled trucks and increased security costs that go along with that, and the 600 to 800 million in taxpayer funds used to monitor incoming Muslims, will never show up in any financial report on the cost of immigration. But another ongoing push from the left that will continue to gain popularity is the claim that refugees haven't been hurting anyone. I mean, the attacks on this country have been from people that have been here right. and have been radicalized. This allows them to use social media, look what the president's doing here, they hate you, and it creates fear among the Muslim community. But, 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 the other thing is... Wait, Tucker, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Before you Tucker, get to the other thing, let me just let's get to the first thing. You just said something. I want to respond. So you're saying that people in this, you're conceding that refugees and children of refugees in this country, because it's factually true, have already committed acts of terror against Americans. Not true. Well, the Zarnayevs? I'm sorry? The Zarnayev brothers? Well, they didn't technically come through the refugee program. Okay, but they were, in, in effect, refugees from another country brought here at public expense. They became radicalized and killed a bunch of Americans. Right, but others that had been radicalized weren't refugees. I mean, the same Well, Bernardino. many were the children of refugees, as you know. Well, I mean, we've, in Minnesota, there have been a number of terror plots. They were born, for, but... No, some of they, them were American-born, but their parents were brought here as refugees. Well, well, not... We can dispute the facts. No, actually we can't. Those are the facts. No, they, they didn't come through the refugee program itself. This is another misleading tactic, because the refugee program they're talking about is relatively new, and so they keep that claim to this specific refugee program and don't count others who were basically refugees, like the Boston bombers, or the Ohio Muslim stabbing, or one of the San Bernardino shooters, or the dozens of others who have been arrested for terrorism before they actually carried out the attack. Or they will push this narrative that shows how homegrown Islamic terrorists are actually more likely to commit violent terrorist acts than the refugees. And that somehow is supposed to mean bringing in people from Islamic countries isn't a problem. But what that actually means is that even if the refugees themselves aren't terrorists, the increased threat of violence never actually goes away. Oh, and then there's a claim about the amazing contributions the refugees are making to society. I think it's important to realize that Muslim Americans are your doctors, they're your teachers, they're your, I get they're that. your politicians. Well, 90% of Muslim refugees who come to America are living off government assistance, or you could call it with taxpayer money of Americans. 97% of Muslim refugees who came into Europe are unemployed and living off welfare even years after they arrived. 
But here's where this argument is ultimately going to go. As Muslim violence increases, the next move for liberals is to say that Muslims are actually conservatives. That's right. Muslims aren't members of the left, even though three quarters of them vote Democrat. They're conservatives because, you know, they're religious and right wingers in America are religious and stuff. As the consequences of importing more Muslims into America and Muslim violence grows more frequent, Muslims are going to be labeled as right wing violence. By the way, the Muslim radicals, you know what they are, the jihadis? They are right wingers. Get that through your head, okay? They're not on the left side of the spectrum in the Muslim world. They're on the far right side of the spectrum in the Muslim world. They are right wing radicals in the Muslim world. What unites them? What unites these terrorists? That they believe in their religious fundamentalism or their fundamentalism rooted in nationalism, racism. It is, fundamentalism of that sort is strictly right wing. Right wing, okay?